So as mentioned in the keynote speeches and introductory remarks of our distinguished uh, guests. So the trend towards a more digital economy has well started before the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, a clear decoupling can be observed around 2010. If you look at the left panel, by 2020, some estimates by the OECD presents that 25% of the global trade is digital. On the right-hand panel, we have a particular analysis on services trade. And we find that information and communication technology registered the fastest growth. If you look at the year averages from 2005 to 2020, average growth rates for both exports and imports in digitally deliverable services surpass the rates of non-digitally deliverable services. Asia and the Pacific is at the forefront of this trend, as mentioned also during the keynote speeches. If for both imports and exports of digitally deliverable services, Asia and the Pacific grew with an average of more than 10%. And 8% respectively against 6.9% and 6.7% for the rest of the world. Next slide. Thus, digital trade is rapidly growing in importance, and this is largely dependent on infrastructure and cross border data flows. It's therefore important that regulatory measures that constrain or restrict information. Uh, should be mitigated because it will have a trade-reducing effect. For example, data localization policies, local storage requirements, and conditional flow regimes, which we can talk about later further during the Q&A portion, can inhibit the free flow of data across borders and hamper digital trade. Restricting the movement of data impedes the ability of firms to source and send data when it is valued at best use, hindering their chances of exploiting comparative advantage. As seen on the right panel, if I may simplify the analysis over there, it's just saying that Asian economies are more negatively impacted than the rest of the world with the presence of these kinds of data-related restrictions. Next slide, please. In response to these rapid digital trends, and as economies become more connected by data flows, governments, of course, have been adopting regulations which can either condition the movement of data across borders or which mandate the data can be uh, stored domestically as seen on the left panel with the increasing trend for uh, restrictive measures for data regulations. Okay. On the right-hand side, on OECD report on digital services trade, again, something particular on digital services, have increased as much as 25% in 2022 compared to 2014 levels, indicating more restrictive digital services regimes. As seen on the right panel as well, the Asia-Pacific trend is high on the average and has been increasing in recent years. Next slide, please. Furthermore, as highlighted by the OECD's Digital Services Trade Restrictiveness Index on the left panel, uh, the Philippines is somewhere there uh, on the right part, meaning we have uh, relatively less restrictive compared to other economies. But what we wish to highlight on the left panel is the heterogeneity. Okay. Uh, the patterns, or at least the values of digital trade restrictiveness, vary largely across economies, and most of these are in Asia and the Pacific region as well. And the kinds of restrictiveness also vary per country, most of which are limited by infrastructure constraints. Furthermore, on the right panel, we also observe heterogeneity in digital regulatory frameworks, meaning if one economy in a trading pair has strong rules about data privacy, for example, while the other partner is not, it may be difficult or impossible or challenging to move data in that direction, therefore also inhibiting digital trade. So we are looking at both disparities and heterogeneities in digital regimes within and across economies. Next slide, please. Amidst the increasing restrictiveness, okay, uh, a research, an ADB research, where I'm also a consultant by Fracane and Dermaral in 2021, found that Asia and the Pacific restrictiveness is more severe compared to the rest of the world as a whole. Though so this is in part because of the People's Republic of China's larger economic weight in Asia. Okay. On the right panel, disaggregating by regulatory measures, Asia's share in local storage requirements is quite less the column in the middle, while its share on conditional flow regimes remains modest. On the other hand, proportion of data localization measures uh, 
for Asia and the Pacific comprise around 70% of the entire regulatory restrictiveness for the world. So we are more towards data localization restriction. Next slide, please. Given these challenges, and amidst the increasing restrictiveness in visual regulations, international cooperation and visual trade is also growing. As you can see from the increasing trend for uh, on the left panel, the green line over there. So there's a growing number of RTAs. Our RTA stands for Regional Trade Agreements with Digital Trade Provisions. Of course, some of them are limiting, but some of them are also facilitating. On the right panel, we see that the governance of trade-related issues, including cross-border data flows, have also migrated to bilateral and regional trade agreements. This is uh, computed from the TAPED data set. It's a trade agreements, provisions on economic uh, on electronic commerce and data database. There were 116 agreements on digital trade or e-commerce as of June 2022 in that database. And it comprises 33% of all existing agreements. Overall, since 2001, 44% or close to half of all agreements already contain a digital trade or an e-commerce provision. So in, um, signifying an increasing interest towards negotiating uh, digital trade related provisions in FTAs and free trade agreements. Next slide, please. If we're, good, if we're going to zoom in on one particular regional trade agreement, allow me to point out RCEP. RCEP is, of course, uh, of course the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. Uh, I highlight this because it's currently the largest free trade agreement in the world by uh, share of GDP, share of population. And the Philippines, together with the rest of ASEAN and five of its dialogue partners, are part of this agreement. In terms of RCEP's uh, scope for digital trade liberalization, the agreement has provisions on e-commerce and intellectual property, which are relevant for digital trade. However, we focus on digital services. Okay, um, the, the, the agreement has no dedicated uh, chapter on digital services and its provisions are subsumed under the trade and services chapters. As seen on the right panel, and this is from a data set prepared by ARIA and the ADB, and we computed actually the liberalization rates across four modes. And if we're just going to highlight both one, which is a proxy for measuring digital services trade, we see that the mode for digital services trade is one of the highest liberalization rates on the average, 46.1. However, again, I point out that disparities in the depth of commitments across its members also vary. And this can skew the potential gains and even. Next slide, please. In fact, we contend that if we graph that services rate restrictiveness and the liberalization rates across economies, we think that uh, the liberalization rates reflect the stringency of domestic regulations, meaning uh, whether or not we commit in our international trade agreements liberally or not is also dictated upon our own domestic restrictions or domestic limitations. For example, there may be little room for further liberalization unless domestic regulatory reforms are implemented at the national level. Next slide, please. In addition to regional trade agreements, there are also digital economy agreements that are in the forefront of efforts to establish data trade rules for a free flow of data across borders, including data security, protection, privacy, and the others. Allow me to highlight some of these digital economic agreements from Singapore and the United Kingdom entering the force 2022, Singapore, Australia 2020, and Singapore, New Zealand, Chile uh, digital economy partnership agreement, all of which are APEC economies entered in 2020. We can talk about that later during the 20. Next slide, please. There are also some of other international cooperation initiatives. Allow me to highlight one the APEC. Cross border privacy rule system. Okay, it's a voluntary accountability based system that facilitates privacy respecting data flows among APEC economies. So, apart from FTAs, there are also different efforts from international uh, initiatives and regional cooperation initiatives that uh, govern data and digital trade. Next slide, please. Finally, in ASEAN, I may also point out, okay, so we have the ASEAN framework on digital data governance stems from, or it is abided by the Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity 2025, and part of its strategic priorities is the facilitation of cross-border data flows. Again, we can discuss this further during the Q&A. 
Next slide, please. That being said, as different governance approaches to cross-border data flows coexist, the significant information gap and the growing divergence in regulatory frameworks remain significant obstacles to digital trade. Facilitating cross-border data flow should be integrated to a greater, more holistic approach to digital economy participation and cooperation. Furthermore, it should be complemented by implementing domestic reforms geared towards bridging, as our keynote speakers have mentioned, the digital divide. Example of which would be, number one, the lack of skills and affordability of technology, digital technologies. The access to digital economy and the internet also remains a challenge, particularly in the region. And countries, therefore, should invest further in ICT infrastructure, enhancing digital skills competency, and intensifying digital regulatory cooperation to better facilitate and increase cross-border trade. Finally, refocusing technical support in aid for trade, of which only 0.4% is currently going to digital services, will also help equip developing economies, particularly those in Asia and the Pacific region, to participate more actively in digital trade initiatives and more fully realize the potential of digital trade for inclusive and sustainable food. I think that's my last slide. Check. Yes. So I think I made it on 10 minutes. So we can further discuss the concerns later during the Q&A. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po.